Good evening and welcome to the Capitol Report on Entity Television. I'm Steve Lance. Here's a look at what's coming up. The Supreme Court could be set to weigh in on the Trump January 6th case, how a rare bid from the special counsel could decide whether Trump would be tried before the 2024 race. And former President Trump no longer testifying in his New York civil fraud trial. Senior Trump advisor Kash Patel is here to weigh in on the decision. In an official full House vote on the impeachment inquiry into President Biden coming this week, this says Hunter Biden is due for a deposition, but will he be showing up? Special Counsel Jack Smith going directly to the Supreme Court, attempting to expedite the prosecution of former President Trump. That's as Trump is claiming presidential immunity in the election case surrounding the 2020 election. Joining us now live is NTD's White House correspondent, Iris Tao, who is at the Supreme Court. Good evening, Iris. So what is the special counsel doing and how could it ultimately impact the timeline of the cases against Trump? What is the special counsel doing and how could it impact the timeline of the cases against Trump? Good evening to you, Steve. So in a rare move today, Special Counsel Jack Smith is asking the Supreme Court to immediately weigh in on Trump's argument that he has presidential immunity for his actions while in office, specifically those relating to the 2020 election. In his petition letter, Jack Smith says his extraordinary request is to prevent any delay and make sure that Trump's trial, which is currently scheduled for March 2024, can move forward as quickly as possible. Trump's team right now is currently seeking to halt the 2020 election case by appealing a D.C. court ruling that's against Trump's claim that he has presidential immunity. But if Jack Smith's request actually succeeds, it will basically present the ultimate question when it comes to Trump's immunity directly to the Supreme Court and circumvent the entire regular process through the appeals court. And of course, it will also mark the first time that the Supreme Court gets to weigh in directly on Trump's prosecutions, which could actually come as soon as in just a few weeks if the Supreme Court actually decides to step in. Steve. Well, Iris, there's certainly a lot to watch for as we wait for the Supreme Court to convene next on January 5th. So, Iris, has Trump responded to this and how might it affect uh, 2024? So former President Trump has yet to personally directly respond to today's move by the special counsel. But we know that Trump has long criticized Jack Smith, calling him deranged and also a Trump hating prosecutor. Meanwhile, the White House today again warned of a threat to democracy, citing Trump's recent comments when it comes to a dictator. Trump, meanwhile, said this over the weekend. Watch. But no, I'm not a threat. I will save democracy. The threat is crooked Joe Biden. That's the threat. And they think that the threat to democracy, and that's what it is, it's a hoax. It's a new, we call it now, the threat to democracy hoax. Trump, meanwhile, is vowing to fight all the way to the Supreme Court when it comes to a gag order imposed on him in this federal 2020 election case. Back to you. Entities Iris Tao reporting live from the Supreme Court. Thank you, Iris. So what might it mean now that former President Trump is not going to testify in his New York civil fraud trial? Joining us now to discuss, we have Kash Patel, currently senior advisor on national security and intelligence to the former president. Kash Patel, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Of course, Kash. Uh, president Trump now says he's not going to be testifying in the New York trial uh, against him, the fraud trial. As you know, the judge has already issued a pretrial ruling finding President Trump liable for fraud. The appellate court paused one of the penalties handed down by Judge Arthur and Gorin uh, that is dissolving the Trump organization, which is a pretty big uh, legal win for the Trump team. They've started an Article 78 proceeding accusing uh, the judge there of unlawful behavior. So is Trump's uh, change a strategic move and does it signal that he believes he will ultimately win on appeal? Look, as a former public defender and prosecutor, it's been on literally both sides of the aisle on this one. Um, allowing the defendant to make the decision based on the evidence that's put for him is supposed to be what the Constitution stands for. And that's what Donald Trump did. He evaluated the current level of intelligence, information, and evidence and made a decision. And here's the thing. You can change your mind whenever you want. He could change his mind again if he wanted to. 
And I'm surprised to hear the media using that, or I guess I'm not surprised, using that as a basis to say, oh, no, now he's cowering away from it. I think he's getting great legal advice from some brilliant lawyers to say, this is the state of play. This is where we at on our appeal. This is where we at publicly. And I think this is what um, his best decision was, given all of that information. So I do think he believes he's, he's going to prevail on appeal. And I think this judge and the law clerk have a lot of issues in the record that are going up on appeal. So, Cash, if President uh, Trump does win his appeals on the civil uh, New York fraud case, do you think this might affect his other criminal cases, and, and, and how so? In terms of legally, there, I don't think they're too connected, legally speaking, because one's a state civil case, and we're talking about criminal cases in the federal courts in D.C. and Florida, and then the state court in Georgia. But in terms of, because it's Donald Trump, because he's the presumptive nominee, I think the media um, will cover this case endlessly. And if it's a victory for Donald Trump, they will show it as a reflection of the mood of the people and the ability to uphold law. Anything short of an outright acquittal on appeal or at the trial level for Donald Trump, in my opinion, uh, would be a uh, destruction of due process and justice. And I think a lot of people are catching on to that. So I think in terms of political headwinds, this will help him a lot once he is victorious there. Kash Patel, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Lawmakers returning to Capitol Hill today with multiple items on the agenda. A visit from Ukraine's president and a full House vote to authorize the impeachment inquiry into President Biden. This as his son faces a Wednesday deadline for a closed door testimony before the House Oversight Committee. NTD's Melina Wisecup reports. Trying, trying to find, to find evidence, evidence that President, that President Biden, Biden has knowingly had a hand, hand in his son's, son's foreign, foreign business, business deals has long, long been the focus of three committee chairmen charged, charged with tracing the facts in the impeachment inquiry into the president. The president. But, up but up until now, the House has not authorized by a full House vote that impeachment inquiry. inquiry. And this, this week, that's, that's likely to change, with Republican House leadership setting up a vote saying they have the support from their entire Republican conference to get this done, arguing that this is the next step they need to take to get their hands on the evidence that they need, as well as back up their arguments should, should their, their subpoenas, subpoenas be challenged in court. In court. They're refusing to turn over key witnesses to allow them to testify as they've been subpoenaed. And when the subpoenas are challenged in court, we'll be at the apex of our constitutional authority. This comes as Hunter Biden is due for a closed-story deposition this Wednesday. Otherwise, he'll face contempt of Congress charges. Up until now, his lawyers have insisted that he does a public testimony instead of a private one. But the Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer is rejecting that proposal and instead insisting that he comply with the subpoena as it's written now to the dismay of his Democrats. He said, he said he doesn't like it because he basically doesn't, doesn't trust his own members, members to be able to ask questions, questions effectively. He wants lawyers, lawyers to do it. it. Although the Comer has left the door open for Hunter Biden to come back and give a public testimony after this closed door session. And in addition to this action on the Biden family, Congress is also facing renewed pressure to act on Ukraine aid amid a stalemate that continues between the House and the Senate. President Vladimir Zelensky will be meeting with the White House senators and House Speaker Mike Johnson tomorrow. Reporting, Reporting from Capitol, Capitol Hill, Hill Melina Weisskopf, NTD News. And breaking now, Hunter Biden's lawyers are trying to dismiss his federal gun charges. In a court filing today, the Biden legal team arguing the charges, quote, violate the previous plea agreement, which has fallen through. But the lawyers say it's still in effect. This is one of two indictments against Hunter Biden, the latest being charges of tax ev evasion. And as UPenn grapples with the resignation of its president and the potential loss of funding, Harvard is fighting to keep its leader in place. Harvard President Claudine Gay continues to have the support of more than 500 faculty members as calls for her resignation continue to grow. Gay has come under fire for her testimony in response to anti-Semitism on the Ivy League campus. Her answer did not sit well with some lawmakers and donors who are putting pressure on her to resign. Many say that Gay failed to say that her students' calls for the genocide of Jews violated the university's policies. Gay has since apologized for her response. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.